Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard that Saturday night is all right for fighting, but did you also know that Monday night is okay for recording your Tuesday episode of your NFL pick show? I swear I heard it from a guy I really trust. What's happening, everybody? Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, fueled as always by the incredible folks at Nerd Tees, and welcome to week 11 of my weekly NFL football pick show for the 2021 NFL football season. Once again, a special Monday evening recording for the Tuesday episode that will be out nice and early for you Tuesday morning, and the schedule is what the schedule is. So obviously we're recording this prior to to the completion of Monday Night Football. So anything could still happen, of course, in the game this evening, which is the Niners playing host to the LA Rams. I personally have that game as the Rams curb stomping the poor Niners. However, I'm noticing that like everyone in the world seems to believe that certainly the betting lines in Vegas and there's a ton of money going in on the Rams and the line is not moving. So I am terrified that that is going to wind up as yet another loss. However, that's how I feel the game's going to go tonight. And I'm taking that context into consideration here as I give you the picks in week 11. Now, obviously, since the week is not yet completed for week 10, in this episode, I'm going to completely skip the pick 'em pools. I'm going to do what I've done a couple times this year and basically take the pick 'em information and put it in the pinned comment on the episode on YouTube. So all of that updated information will be in there for you. We'll save us some time on the recording right now. As of right now, I am 7 5 and 1 straight up in week 10. Has me 81 67 and 1 on the season. Of course, the game that was so bad. God, it deserved to end in a tie, and I was just so, so happy when it did. Obviously, that being Detroit and Pittsburgh, that 16-16 absolute dumpster fire of a football game ended exactly how it deserved to on yet another turnover in overtime, ending tied at 16. Against the spread, we're going to be a bit underwater this week, but not crazy. It's 5-8 uh, and eight against the spread right now. I have Rams minus 4 tonight, so could wind up 6-8, and eight, or could wind up 5-9 and nine if that bad feeling in my stomach winds up being accurate. 66-81-2 against the spread right now, so again, 15 games under 500, but we've still got almost half a season to go here, so there's plenty of time to play some catch-up there. In the new era of the over-unders on the show, which those being only the ones in my top four picks, I went one and three. So the more things change, the more they stay the same, unfortunately. 56 and 84 on the totals on the season, one and three in this new era. And honestly, I'm shocked with how bad my top picks, my platinum, gold, silver, and bronze picks were this past week. I'm shocked I'm 7-5-1 and one straight up. Like three of my five straight up losses came in my platinum, gold, silver, and bronze picks. So obviously things went very poorly with those picks this past week. Arizona lost to Carolina by three possessions. Tampa loses to Washington by double digits. Baltimore starts off the week losing to Miami by double digits. Just absolute insanity in some of these games that you felt really should have been layups. So I was only one and three straight up. Only Indianapolis got the job done in those picks by beating Jacksonville 23 to 17. Of course, they couldn't cover 10 and a half against the spread. So I was 0 and four against the spread in those picks last week, which is just PU, absolutely disgusting. The only total that I got right was under 44 and a half in Arizona, Carolina. And that was literally by a half point. So I half pointed Vegas rather than Vegas half pointing me. So that's a nice little change. 
As I said, we're going to skip over the stuff in the pick'em pools entirely. That will all be updated in the pinned comment down below in the YouTube episode, which means we're going to skip straight through to Fantasy Corner, which is, of course, brought to you by the Dynasty Trade Calculator. And folks, if you go into the description of the YouTube episode, you're going to find my affiliate link, my referral link to the Dynasty Trade Calculator. And that is one of the absolute best resources online for Keeper, Dynasty, and long-term fantasy football if you're somebody like me taking more of a longer term emphasis and a longer term lean on fantasy football you want to play a more closer to life version of the fantasy game that we all know and love and most of us listening to this probably play the dynasty trade calculator is just one of those things that you have to have in your back pocket to give you an edge over these other killers over these other managers out there does not matter how your long-term league is configured figured you could have super flexes you could have tight end uh, premiums you could have running back points per carry it does not matter the dynasty trade calculator has you covered with trade evaluations player evaluations podcasts rankings everything that you could need some of the best experts in the biz they're available at the dynasty trade calculator for as little as three dollars to get access to this incredible tool Obviously, the fantasy week is not over yet, but right now I'm projecting to finish the week four and two. A nice little bounce back from last week in fantasy where I believe I was only two and four. So kind of flipping the script from last week. Uh, seventh place and seventh place is where I'm projecting to be overall in my best ball leagues so we're you know we're underwater in best ball unfortunately but look it's my first year playing it i've enjoyed it i'm looking forward to learning more about it and coming back stronger next year now one of my two losses actually comes in the professionals dynasty fantasy football league where i dropped my third game of the season this one to Enzonio gibson which is an excellent fantasy football name my good friend conrad from down under so that drops me to seven and three which is really unfortunate because it moves four teams into a tie for first place in that league if i'd have been able to come up with the win i'd have been in first place all alone so a little heartbreaking but them's the breaks in fantasy sometimes in the official nfl youtube prognosticators fantasy football league I picked up the win this week over Team IR. That's Billy B. That moves my record to four and six on the season. We ain't dead yet, folks. We ain't dead yet in this playoff picture. I got to keep winning, and I've got a murderer's row of a schedule coming up. It's real tough, basically after this week. This week, I've got matchups with Half Moon's picks in the Progs League, which is a projected win for me. His team is weaker this year. I absolutely 1,000% cannot punt that match matchup if i do there'll be basically no hope but if i win that matchup you know the possibility is still there in the professionals dynasty fantasy football league i have a matchup coming up against the real slim brady right now that is too close to call that's holly's team she's one of the better managers in the league and that's going to be a tight matchup one way or the other got to get back on the winning side of things in the professionals and of course, I'll take the opportunity, as I do every week, to let you know that if you go to the description of this episode on YouTube or on SoundCloud, iTunes, wherever you get your podcasts of choice, you're going to find all of my results from last week once they're all updated, all of my picks for week 11 in the NFL. You're going to find information on joining the Bridgewater's Finest, the Half Moons picks, or the Anti and Co. Pick'em pools for this year. Again, if you win a week, then you get yourself shouted out in one way or another on this show. You can find information on joining the NFL YouTube Prognosticators Fantasy or Fantasy Facebook page is what I meant to say. And you'll find information on my great friends and sponsors at Nerd Tees. I kicked off this recording at right around 20 to 7 local time, and that is no better time in the evening for a delicious, delicious hot cup of Nerd Tees. NerdTees.ca, where you are going to want to use my promo code BWFINEST, which is going to save you 15% at checkout on virtually anything that you buy. You're also going to get free shipping in Canada on any order over 100 bucks, which is an excellent deal, especially right now with shipping costs just going up and up and up. You're also going to get a great version rate on the US dollar if you're one of my American listeners. Today's blend is strawberry power up, going to give me that extra little boost to get through this Monday evening recording, but there is just almost an endless supply of 
excellent options for you on nerdtees.ca. It is not too late for Christmas, but it's getting pretty darn close, folks. I'm sure there's some Black Friday funsies coming up for you on nerdtees.ca. Go there, use my promo code BWFINEST, get your free shipping, save your 15%, find yourself something to love, or find someone you love something to love. You can do it on nerdtees.ca. All right, folks, we've just got 15 games in the league this week with just two teams on by, those being the Broncos and the Rams after they play this evening. We're going to kick things off in Buffalo. The Buffalo Bills at home playing host to the Indianapolis Colts. And as far as I'm concerned, this is one of the marquee matchups of this week because this is a matchup of two of the absolute best teams in the AFC. This is a battle of the number one and number two teams across the NFL in terms of turnover differential. Both of them are in the double digits in the positives. So far this season, they have ball hawking defenses, offenses that control and are careful with the football. If there is an edge in the little things, for lack of a better term, it probably goes to the Indianapolis Colts simply based on the Colts take almost the fewest amount of penalties in the league whereas buffalo it takes more than i would like them to i i think that's one of the things that might hold buffalo back from being a truly elite contender in the afc picture and in the nfl as a whole man they take way too many penalties but i mean if they can clean that up then there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't look at buffalo as a super bowl favorite if you don't already a little bit of an edge there for the colts just in terms of the little things I'd say these two teams pretty darn similar over their last four or five weeks. The Colts offense has been undeniable over the last month. 32 points a game over their last four. I'm going to give the edge in this matchup, though, to the Buffalo Bills. I'm going to take Buffalo to win this one simply because Buffalo's defense has been lights out. Aside from giving up 34 in that loss, like, three weeks ago or something like that the defense has allowed 17 9 and 11 so you're talking about 37 points total allowed over the last three weeks the bills defense is humming i think that gives them the ultimate edge in this matchup i think buffalo comes away with the win let's take the bills to beat the colts this is going to be a very very entertaining game and it's going to be close enough that i'm taking the points with the indianapolis colts the bills are laying a full touchdown at home right now minus seven that's too many points given that this is i mean this could be an afc championship game preview genuinely it could like i i don't i think the colts top to bottom might be a better team than tennessee who's one of the other teams that's in that conversation obviously in the afc and obviously where they share a division but this could very easily be an afc title preview seven points just too many here so we're going to take the seven points on the colts let's go bills 31 colts 27. Let's go to Chicago now where the Bears coming in fresh off of their bye, well-rested, playing host to the Baltimore Ravens. Baltimore, of course, having the benefit of the long week and coming off of, again, that truly bizarre 22-10 to loss against the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins' defense is so bad that I'm shocked that Lamar Jackson and that offense only figured out how to score 10 points. One of the ways that that happened is Baltimore has slowly crept down the board in terms of controlling the football. They give up way too many turnovers. The defense not quite generating as many as one would hope that they would. Now, they do have the benefit, like I mentioned, of the long week. However, they are on the tail end of back-to-back -back road games. Last week, I believe teams were 2-2 two and two straight up and 2-2 two and two against the spread. So, kind of even money, but I'm still calling it at least a bit of a detriment to have to play back-to-back -back road games. I don't think the Bears, I, I, it's not a matter of think, I know the Bears aren't good enough to give them the credit of winning this football game. So I'm definitely going to be on the Ravens here, but it's more tentative than it should be. Like this should be a layup. This game should be in my top four, all things considered. But I, I mean, I just simply can't justify doing it with what I saw from the Ravens at the very least last week. On the line, the Bears are taking six points as home dogs. I'm going to lay the six points on the Ravens, but once again, this is a very tentative lay on the Baltimore Ravens. And I understand that Chicago is really bad. Like, there's no getting around it. The Bears are a bad football team. They've been a bad football team over the last month. Baltimore has been 
mediocre is my problem like again this should be a layup i understand the bears are only scoring 17 points a game in the last month they're giving up 31 so their defense is almost completely cratered baltimore is scoring some points but it's like hot cold hot cold hot cold they'll score 30 and then they'll score less than 20 and then they'll score 30 again and then they'll score less than 20. i'm gonna take them with the points, laying the points on the Ravens. But again, it is not as comfortable as it probably should be. So we're going to lay the six points on Baltimore. Let's take Ravens 28, Bears 21. But I'm watching you, Baltimore. Let's go to Cleveland now where the Browns are going to take on the aforementioned Detroit Lions who guaranteed that they will not be the first team to go 0-17. So good for you, Detroit. You really grinded out that tie despite your best efforts to give the game away. Holy cow, that team is bad. Uh, Detroit on the tail end of back-to-back -back road games here, so hurrah for them. The Cleveland Browns, they looked real good right at the beginning of the game. They took the ball straight down the field and scored, and that was about the last good thing that they did in that game last week. Cleveland getting blown out last week, and now... Look, again, this is another game that if I had any faith whatsoever in the team that's clearly the favorite, this game would be in my, um, would be in the top four without question. Cleveland kind of like the Buffalo Bills, one of the more penalized teams in the league. You don't like to see that from a team that, again, the expectation here at the very least is that the Browns should be better than what they're showing. Obviously, they're dealing with a lot of injuries and they're dealing with Baker Mayfield, who has never really had the opportunity to be healthy and kind of get out of the blocks this season. Like he's been injured for so much of this season. It's why you can't pay him. To be perfectly honest, if I want to toss my hat into that discussion, you can't pay him. You can't pay him $30, $35 million to be your starting quarterback, not based off what you saw this year. So you got to try to get some kind of short-term deal out of him, hopefully, to see if he can prove that he deserves that kind of money. I don't think he's done that to this point in his career. I'm going to take the Browns here because they're, they are the better football team. Should be getting Kareem Hunt back this week. So Dernis Johnson, nice knowing you back to the third string on the bench. So it, it, it should be hopefully Chubb, although I think Chubb might be in COVID protocol. But they should be getting Hunt back. So hopefully they'll have their top two backs. And when they have those top two backs, this is a dangerous offense that can do a lot of things. I'm going to take Cleveland to win the game. Because, my God, it's Detroit. So let's take the Browns at home to beat the Lions. But on the line, Cleveland's laying 10 points. No. Look, Cleveland could win this game by 30. It could happen. It doesn't mean that laying 10 points on the Browns on Monday night is the right thing to do. The right thing to do is take the points with the Detroit Lions. Who knows? Detroit could pull the upset in this one. I don't think it's going to happen, especially not where they might be missing one of their best defensive players in uh, Tracy Tracy Walker, I believe it was, at safety. Uh, I think they I think that he's dealing with a concussion maybe, so they might not have him for this game. They might, but they might not. But I'm still going to take the 10 points because, my God, who in their right mind is going to lay 10 points on the Browns right now? So take the 10 points on the Lions, but we're going to go Cleveland 24, Detroit 16. Let's go to New York now for another battle of futility. Jets playing host to the Miami Dolphins. Now, the Dolphins, they did get that win, 22-10 to against the Ravens, that I certainly didn't think they were going to get last week. The defense looked better than it has basically all season. The offense looked better than it has basically all season. But look, one game, and we'll talk about this later when we talk about the Kansas City Chiefs, one game does not completely change the context of a team or a season. Make no mistake about it, these are two really bad football teams. The Jets, one of the worst teams at controlling the football in the NFL. The Dolphins take some of the most and worst penalties in the NFL. They get the slight edge of the fact that they're on the long week. I was pretty committed when I saw this game on the schedule. Whichever one of these two teams is the underdog, upset. Just take it because both teams are really bad. So the Jets are home underdogs here. 
I'm going to take the Jets to win this game outright, and I'm going to do my best to forget that this game is actually something that exists. So, look, I'm going to take the Jets straight up to beat the Dolphins. There's no insightful reason why I'm going to do that. It's for the simple fact that there's no way I was going to lay points on either of these teams, and given that that's the case, I might as well try to cherry-pick an upset for the rule of four, which is 10-0 and 0 now, by the way. Did you like my little rule of four ASMR there? I know you did. So we're going to take the three points, obviously, here on the Jets as home underdogs. And I'm going to take the Jets to win this game outright. Let's go New York 23, Miami 21. Let's go to Philadelphia now where don't look now, but the Philadelphia Eagles are doing some things. Like their, their offense and their defense have been doing some stuff over the last month. They're scoring 30 points a game over their last four games and they're only giving up 20 that makes them one of the hotter teams in the nfl right now believe it or not like that kind of puts them in like dallas cowboys territory the eagles this week are going to play host to the new orleans saints who are on the tail end of back-to-back -back road games one of the better ball possession teams in the nfl they're generating turnovers on the defensive side they don't give up a ton offensively We'll hopefully be getting Alvin Kamara back this week, although Mark Ingram had himself a game in relief for the Saints last week. The Eagles, they're still, despite how, what they've done over the last month, their defense runs hot and cold. There's still issues with them in terms of the number of penalties they take. I think they might be the most or second most penalized team in the NFL. They're also dealing with a really significant injury, and it's the first injury uh the first injury update that we're going to talk about this week, and it's Dallas Goddard at tight end. Like, this is the guy that made them comfortable letting go of Zach Ertz. And he is dealing with a head injury. He is in concussion protocol. There is no update for him at this point. I feel like he's closer to not playing than playing. I would be surprised if we see Dallas Goddard in this game. And that's one of those things in combination with the penalties, in combination with, again, the little things where I just... Philly just doesn't have my full trust right now. If they can win a game like this against a really game opponent, Philly might get a little more of my trust. I trusted them last week. They paid me off. I don't necessarily trust them this week. I am going to take the Saints on the road in Philadelphia to beat the Eagles. On the line, the Eagles are laying a point and a half as a home favorite here. I think this line should be even closer than it is, but I like the Saints to win outright, so I'm going to take the point and a half on New Orleans. Let's go Saints 23, Eagles 16. Let's go to Carolina now, and hey, Cam Newton is back in original form, and he really looked it in the obviously very limited action that he got in the game last week. But look, he had a rushing touchdown, kind of looked like Cam Newton. Some of his throws, oh boy, some of them didn't look all that great, but he still had a passing touchdown. So I think he's going to get the start in this game. I genuinely do. Matt Rule, I think, has basically come out and said, look, Cam's going to work with the ones for most of the week. And that probably puts him on track to start this game where they're going to play host to the Washington football team. Now, this a story of two teams going in completely opposite directions in terms of their discipline. Carolina takes among the most penalties in the league. Washington takes among the fewest. So we always like those teams that have significant advantages in terms of the little things. However, we don't like a team in Washington that has been very questionable on defense despite what happened last week and who just lost Chase Young for the year. This is a brutal, brutal injury. Chase Young tearing his ACL, uh, defending pro bowler, defending rookie, you know, rookie defensive player of the year, um, tears his ACL, done for the year. I feel awful for this young man because he is one of the premier defensive players in the NFL. It makes that Washington defense marginally, no, not marginally, markedly is what I meant to say, markedly worse. And I think Cam Newton and the Carolina offense is kind of figuring things out a little bit, might be feeling a little more confident now that they can kind of feel like Christian McCaffrey is healthy again. You had Chuba Hubbard poaching a touchdown last week. I think the Carolina offense gets this job done. Let's take the Panthers at home with their big CGI animatronic Panther to beat the football team.
on the line the panthers are laying three points i'm glad the number isn't any more than this because i'd feel really uncomfortable laying anything more but i like them to win it's the highest range of the small price to pay for me so i'm going to lay the three points on the panthers here carolina minus three let's go carolina 24 washington 20. let's go to jacksonville now jags and 49ers which again depending on the results of the game this evening may be another one of those games that i can want to close my eyes think of the queen and pretend that it's a game that does not exist um jags are the home team here one of the worst in fact the worst or second worst ball control team in the entire nfl they give up a ton of turnovers generate almost none on the defensive side you got the Niners who will of course have the detriment of the short week because they play the Rams tonight. The Niners are not very good in their own right in terms of protecting the football, but they don't take a lot of penalties. I think that discipline will come into play in this game. Assuming the Niners don't have any kind of catastrophic injury in their game tonight, this feels like a game that the Niners are going to win. Um, the Niners have been a pretty good road team over the last couple of years, even in a situation like this where not only are they the road team but they're the road favorite they're five and five against the spread as road favorites over the last couple of years so i feel okay taking the niners to win this game outright let's take san fran to beat the lowly jags now on the line it is an uncomfortable laying of points but i am gonna lay the six points on the niner san francisco minus six jags taking six points as the home dog i'm gonna lay them because i think it's how the game is going to land it's not comfortable at all this would be nowhere near a betting slip of mine but we're gonna go ahead and lay the six points on the niners because i've got no other choice i don't think let's take san francisco 21 jacksonville 14 let's get out of this game as quickly as possible now Who's ready for my overreaction Monday Pat McAfee show hot take? Because here it comes. I told you we were going to talk about the Chiefs. The fact that the Kansas City Chiefs had one dominant offensive game against a division opponent that has a middling defense does not mean that the Kansas City Chiefs are quote unquote back. Now it does mean that they're alive. They're certainly alive and they showed that they've still got a little bit of horsepower behind those punches. It showed that they're alive, does not show that they are back. When they do it for back-to-back -back weeks, three weeks in a row, not necessarily as dominant as they were last week, because my God, they completely pulverized the Raiders. Not necessarily that dominant, but the offense putting up 30 points, the defense playing at least a solid game, putting them in position to win games instead of losing games for them. If they can string that together over three weeks, maybe a month, may, uh, yeah, I'll even take two weeks. Maybe then I'll start being like, yeah, okay, the Chiefs are back. As of right now, they had one good game. And now they're going to play host to a Dallas Cowboys team that is one of the best teams in the NFL over the span of the last month or so. These two teams going in opposite directions in terms of protecting the football. Dallas, one of the better teams in the NFL. Kansas City, one of the lesser teams in the NFL. Both of these teams take too many penalties. So that could come into play here. If a team can figure out a way to win the penalty battle in this game, that could be enough of an edge with you know close opponents like this that maybe that might be enough to propel you to an outright win you know do you take a couple of bad penalties here and there it can lose you a football game the dallas cowboys are the better football team top to bottom i'm going to assume that the arm contusion to cd lamb is not a big deal and that he's going to play they got michael gallup back they got him involved in the offense i expect him to take a step forward in week two he should be better I just think Dallas has too much on both sides of the football. I think the Chiefs have a lot on one side and honestly not very much on the other one. So I'm going to take the Cowboys to win this game outright in Kansas City. Give me Dallas over the Chiefs. On the line, Chiefs laying two points here as the home favorite. I like Dallas to win. Give me the two points. Dallas plus two. Let's take Cowboys 31, Chiefs 21. Just three more games on the slate here, folks, before we get to the platinum, gold, silver, and bronze picks. Let's start with the division matchup here of the NFC West, Seattle Seahawks playing host to the Arizona Cardinals. Obviously, heading into this, the Cardinals are kind of fighting through a down portion of their season. Obviously, they're dealing with 
injuries to Kyler Murray, injuries to uh, D Hop. I mean, like the Cardinals are definitely fighting through it right now. Games are not coming to them as easily as they were earlier in the season. And speaking of which, the Seahawks get Russell Wilson back. They get healthy. They get their you know franchise quarterback back, and they get shut out by the Packers. Uh, now, obviously, that Packers defense is really good, and we will gush about them later on in the show. But uh, boy, to get shut out in Russell Wilson's comeback is uh, was crazy. Now, what I can say is that Seahawks uh, quote unquote Legion of Boom defense, that scoring defense, they're like all the way back. Over the last month, Seattle's defense has been tremendous. They have not given up more than 23 points in a game over their last four. The offense just hasn't been able to keep pace. They did score 31 a couple of weeks ago, but have not topped 20 in any other game over the last month. I still feel like Arizona's got the edge here. I think they're the better football team. There are a lot of things that are leaning on Arizona's side of the ledger. They protect the football very well, and Seattle dealing with a potentially significant injury on their offensive line, which for them is the last place that they would want to have an injury. And trust me, it's not a nobody. It's offensive tackle Dwayne Brown. He came out of the game last week, left early, did not return. They called it a hip slash groin injury. What seems likely is he probably strained his groin. The thought was he stepped on somebody's foot and the idea was he strained his groin when he stepped on somebody's foot. So chances are, I don't think Dwayne Brown plays in this game. And if he doesn't, I think that Arizona pass rush is going to make Russell Wilson's life miserable. And speaking of Russell Wilson, once again, he came back. He didn't look that great to me. Uh, I don't necessarily know that... He was ready to come back last week. Maybe he will be more ready this week. Obviously, he will be able to get up for a defensive or a defensive divisional opponent. And he'll have that, you know, those extra reps and the extra practice time and his routine back that he's never had to break as an NFL pro. And he had to for the very first time. So maybe that really played into things. And maybe we'll see an entirely different Russell Wilson this week. However, I am going to take the Cardinals. I think the cards is the safe play here. It's a division game. Anything can happen. Let's take Arizona in Seattle to beat the Seahawks. On the line, Arizona's only laying two and a half points here as a road favorite. I like them to win. It's a small price to pay. Let's lay the two and a half points on Arizona. I'm going to go cards 31, Seahawks 9, maybe? I'm really scared for this offense, especially like without a guy like Dwayne Brown. I'm really scared for this offense. Let's go to Los Angeles now. Chargers and Steelers. Um, Chargers, I still have no idea what in the world they are. Steelers, I thought I knew what they were, and then I watched them tie the Detroit Lions, so I guess I have no idea what they are. Chargers all of a sudden can't score any points, which seems crazy with the offensive weapons that they have. They're struggling to score points. Their defense is not playing very well. They have not given up fewer than 24 points in any of their last four games. That's a problem playing a team that can score some points. And the Steelers can score some points when they want to. Probably not with Mason Rudolph. Please, for the love of God, show us some Dewey Haskins. Dwayne Haskins better get the start if Roethlisberger cannot play. But between these two teams, the only X factor that I think on either side of the football exists is the Steelers' defense. That defense playing very, very well over the last month. They had one hiccup a couple of weeks ago. Other than that, they've been pretty darn dynamic. So I think the Steelers' defense is what winds up uh, playing the biggest role in this game. And I'm actually going to take the Steelers to win this game outright. They are an underdog in Los Angeles feels like one of these games that no matter how I pick it, it's going to wind up being wrong. So let's play the percentages in this one. We are going to take the Steelers outright, despite the fact that they do have an injury and they are dealing with an injury. And that is, where are my notes? Where did you go? TJ Watt, potentially. Dealing with hip and knee injuries, he did have a negative MRI. So, I mean, he might play this week. Whether he plays this week or not, I do think Pittsburgh finds a way to beat the Chargers. So let's take Pittsburgh in L.A. to beat the Chargers. 
on the line Steelers are four and a half point dogs which feels like a hedge one way or the other to me I think you'd have to be out of your mind to lay four and a half points on the Chargers as favorites right now against almost anybody in the league and it's not that they're bad it's that who the hell knows what they are I don't know that anybody knows what this Chargers team is so we're going to take the four and a half points with Pittsburgh because I like them to win outright let's go Steelers 27 chargers 24 and the last game we're going to look at before we get to the platinum gold silver and bronze are the tampa bay bucks at home playing host to a new york giants team coming in off of the bye ideally their injury injuries that they've been nursing guys like Kadarius tony and kenny galladay and uh saquon barkley of course hopefully those players have an opportunity to get the extra rest and are ready to roll in this game whether they are or they aren't, uh, Tom Brady's mad. Bruce Arians is mad, which by the way, if I was a player on an NFL roster, I think I'd want to be a player for Bruce Arians. Because when you see that press conference after the game last week, he said, we are a very, very dumb football team. And it's just like, you just, it's not a thing that you hear coaches say every day. So I'm just, I'm a big fan of Bruce Arians. So I'd like to be on a Bruce Arians coach team. I think a lot of Giants players would like to be on a Bruce Arians coached team after this game. This is the Tom Brady revenge game. Four touchdowns on the board. That's what I'm predicting. Bucks are going to win this thing pretty comfortably. It will be comfortable enough that I am actually going to lay the points against the spread. Tampa's favored by 11 points in this one, and I'm going to lay them. I, I just, it's not a crazy confident lay, but it is enough that I think it's going to hit. I expect the Giants to probably score some points here in garbage time, but I think the Bucks will still cover. So let's lay the 11 points on Tampa Bay. We're going to go Bucks 34, Giants 21. All right, folks, here we go. Platinum, gold, silver, and bronze picks for week 11 in the NFL. We're going to kick things off with the bronze pick, which has been the most successful pick on the season so far. Eight and two straight up, seven and three against the spread, and even money at five and five on the totals. The bronze pick in week 11 sees the Cincinnati Bengals on the road in Las Vegas taking on the Raiders. Now, Teams playing the Raiders in Vegas have been kind of uh, the Vegas flu, quote unquote, is definitely a thing. And teams have been susceptible to that. And while I'm certainly not as high on the Bengals as I was a couple of weeks ago, I still feel really confident about this Bengals offense. I think they bounce back from that 16 point performance a couple of weeks ago. The defense has struggled the last couple of games. I think they wind up turning that around. I was really not impressed with any phase of the Raiders game in that game against Kansas City last week. So we're going to exploit that a bit. Let's grab the Bengals on the road in vegas bengals taking some of the fewest penalties in the nfl raiders taking some of the most again it's the little things and i think that winds up making a big difference here let's take the well-rested bengals to beat the raiders on the line cincinnati's a single point favorite on the road in vegas so obviously i like them to win it's basically the smallest price to pay so we're going to lay the single point on cincinnati now, since we're in the platinum, gold, silver, and bronze, here come your totals for the week. Total in the game set at 49 points here for Cincinnati and Vegas. I'm going to lean over on this. I think this game gets into the 50s. I think Cincinnati, again, has a bounce back on both sides of the ball. I don't really trust the Raiders on either side. So we're going to go over on this one, over 49 points in Cincinnati, Vegas. Bengals straight up, we're going to lay the single point on Cincinnati in a game that goes over 49 points. That is the bronze pick. Let's go Bengals 31, Raiders 23. My silver pick, where I'm 8 and 2 straight up, but now only 4 and 6, both against the spread and over under, sees my Green Bay Packers on the road in Minnesota taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Obviously, division matchup of the NFC North, matchup of two teams that protect the football rather well, but a matchup of one team that takes very few penalties, those being the Green Bay Packers, one team that takes a lot of penalties, that being the Minnesota Vikings. Way too many, in fact, and again, little things win and lose you football games. We've seen it multiple times this year where the Vikings really get burned by a late penalty and it winds up at least contributing to them losing games. 
Now, Packers are dealing with an injury here, and it's a, not an insignificant one. It's Aaron Jones in the backfield. He suffered a knee injury, did not finish the game last week. Now, it has come out that it's a mild MCL sprain that was based off of an MRI earlier today. He was out this week. He will likely be out next week as well. But boy, you look at what A.J. Dillon did when he came into the game. He scored two two rushing touchdowns, I think. You think he scored both of the Packers' touchdowns. I think A.J. Dillon is going to be able to, in a vacuum, in the span of like a couple of games, I think he can play that three down back role. I wouldn't want him to be a three down back long term at this point in his career, but hey, lucky us, he doesn't have to be that. Just for a game or two, I think he can play that role here against the Vikings. I don't see Green Bay having a crazy difficult time in this game. A large reason for that is... Oh my God, that defense is incredible. Given that you don't have your best pass rusher, you don't have one of the best defensive backs in the NFL, you're dealing with injuries, you're dealing with backups, it's next man up. It's been exactly what coaches across the league and across all sports have always preached when it comes to injuries. Next man up, next man up, next man up. It's been exactly that for the Packers. So, Whitney Merciless last week. Uh, look, Eric Stokes went out. I believe Eric Stokes was injured either last week or the week before. So he's not playing at 100%. This Packers defense is something special. This is the best Packers defense that they've had since they won the Super Bowl. It, was, it looked awfully familiar to this type of defense. They've really changed things around. I would put this Packers defense up against just about anybody in the NFL. I think it's good enough to get the job done this week. Packers go into Minnesota and beat the Vikes. On the line, Packers are only laying two and a half points here as a road favorite. I expect this line to increase before kickoff. I like them to win. It's a small price to pay. I'm going to lay the two and a half points on Green Bay. Total in the game set at 49. I feel the way I feel about the Packers defense. I think they wind up being the difference in this game. Let's go under 49 points in Green Bay, Minnesota. Packers 27, Vikes 17. Packers straight up, lay the two and a half on Green Bay, under 49. My gold pick, where I'm 7-3 and three straight up, but 4-6 and six, both against the spread and over-under, sees the Tennessee Titans hosting a division matchup here at home, taking on the Houston Texans. Now, Titans, Texans, it is a uh, just an absolute polar opposite matchup. A matchup, obviously, very obviously, of too much versus not enough. And that's despite, look, the Titans, you can almost say the same thing as I just said about the Packers. Next man up mentality. It's been, okay, Derrick Henry goes down. He was a huge part of your offense. Let's bring guys in and figure it out. Let's bring in Adrian Peterson. We got Jeremy McNichols there. Let's bring guys in and figure it out. Julio Jones has played like one game all year, it seems. Okay, let's figure out other guys in the receiving core. Figuring out ways to win. The Titans have done a really good job of that this year. And I don't think the Texans, even with the benefit of the bye, so they're coming in well-rested, yeah, the Titans take a few too many penalties, like I mentioned earlier in the episode, but Tennessee should have no problem winning this game. Let's take the Titans at home to beat Houston. However, here's what I am going to acquiesce to. I'm going to take the points on the Houston Texans in this game. It's 10 and a half as the road dog. It is a division game. It's double digit points. Two of Tennessee's last four games would not have covered this number. And another one was like within a point and a half. I don't know. It There's something in my gut that tells me not to lay the points in this game. So I'm going to follow my most prodigious gut. And I'm going to take the 10 and a half points on the Texans. Total in the game set at 45. I have to go under on it. I don't know what I'm going to get from the Houston Texans offensively. I don't really know what I'm going to get from either team defensively. So I think I got to go uh, under 45 in this one. It's it's a it's a, oh, text message from somebody, apparently. Um, it, it's a tough one. I don't really love the sweat on this number one way or the other, but I'm going to stick under on it. Let's go under 45 points in Houston, Tennessee. Like Tennessee straight up, but I'm going to hedge my bets and take the Texans plus the 10 and a half points 
in a game that stays under 45. That is the gold pick. Let's go Titans 27, Texans 17, and the platinum pick where I'm 8 and 2 straight up. 4-6 and six against the spread and 4-6 and six on the total, which sees the Atlanta Falcons at home playing host to the New England Patriots. And boy, oh boy, I guess Bill Belichick was right all along. Who would have thunk it? So we all know Patriots struggled last year. I think they were only 7-9 and nine or something. Not the kind of season that the Patriots are used to. And everybody's like, oh my God, the Patriots are done. The dynasty is dead. Bill Belichick says, screw that. I'm going to go out and spend $150 bajillion on the first tampering day of free agency. I'm going to bring all these players in. We're going to get some players back that were COVID holdouts. Oh, we're just willy-nilly going to have one of the top five quarterbacks fall to us in the draft oh he's just willy-nilly gonna take over as the starter and show that he's already a player in this league so everything is always coming up uncle bill belichick isn't it i think that trend's gonna continue this week because boy the falcons they had something going and then they very much do not have something going anymore they're still dealing with injuries the offense is hit and miss. The defense has kind of cratered here over the last month. I just don't see the Falcons immediately 180-ing in this situation to all of a sudden come up and challenge a team like New England, even though the game is in Atlanta. Really like the Patriots in this spot. Low scoring game probably. Let's take New England on the road in Atlanta to beat the Falcons. On the line, Patriots are laying six and a half points here as road favorites. I like them to win. I see this as a two possession game. So I'm okay laying the six and a half points here on New England. Their offense and their defense humming along greatly lately. Total in the game set at 47 points. I don't trust the Falcons on the offensive side, at least not without a guy like Calvin Ridley. So I think I got to stick under on this one. New England wants to win games on the defensive side. I'm going to trust them in that. Let's go under 47 points in New England, Atlanta. Patriots straight up. We're going to hammer the Patriots minus six and a half against the spread in a game that stays under 47 points. That is the platinum pick. Let's go Patriots 27, Falcons 13. There you have it, folks. There are the picks for week 11 of the NFL. Obviously an early Monday evening recording. It is time now for the patented comment of the week. The comment of the week from the week 10 episode is going to go to a longtime viewer of mine, Mr. Maricopa 100. I believe he's been watching my videos for my God, five, six years. He's been a long time viewer of mine. So we were having a conversation about his pick'em league. He updates me basically every week on his pick'em league and how he's doing and everything like that. But he made a, a comment in here that I think just kind of encapsulates the way that I look at how this season has gone to this point and kind of where we're heading in terms of, I know it's early to start talking about the playoffs, but kind of where we're going in terms of the playoffs. His comment was, my God, Miami dominates Baltimore. Last week, Jacksonville holds Buffalo to six points. Cleveland and Kansas City early season favorites are average at best. Appears the AFC has no really great teams, just a bunch of average teams. The NFC has Dallas, Green Bay, Tampa Bay, Arizona, the LA Rams playing really well, leaving only the six and seven seeds in doubt. With the AFC loaded with mediocrity, great word, great phrasing, the games are getting tougher to pick. I 100% agree with that. I think the AFC, there's far more parity in the AFC than it seems. It seems like they're like records wise, there are two or three really great teams, but those really great teams are also playing what I feel is lesser competition on average than you'd play in the NFC. So you are looking, I think, at a case where the AFC is, as Maricopa mentions, kind of full of mediocrity. You might have one or two really good teams in the AFC and everybody else is just kind of varying degrees of average. So Mr. Maricopa, I'm right there with you. Yours is the comment of the week from the week 10 episode. And with that, folks, the week 11 show now in the books. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen, taking the time to watch as always. That's it for me, Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, fueled as always by the incredible folks at Nerd Tees. Enjoy the games in week 11. Heck, enjoy Monday Night Football tonight, because that game, well, not even going to kick off for another pretty well 
hour and a half. So enjoy that game. Enjoy week 11. We will see you again for week 12, already a dozen weeks into this season, careening recklessly towards the postseason. We'll see you next week.